Now we will explore the details of loop testing. First, let's consider the different kinds of loops there might exist. So we can have a simple loop where you just have a for statement and inside you perform some actions. Or it could also be a while statement as well. Next, we can have nested loops. So basically you have loops that are inside of each other. So you have the first four here, which goes this way. The second four tests the condition goes here, does something, returns to this first for loop to test the condition, goes around here, as long as i reaches j, and then goes back to the main loop, and then probably comes back again, and, and so on. So this is a nested loop. Then we might have concatenated loops. Basically, this means that in the program, two loops follow each other. So first we have a for loop that does something until i is uh, equal to x, and then in the next loop we do something until uh, uh, j equals to x again, but we approach it uh, the x from, from the top. And the final category is unstructured loop um, whose testing we don't cover. So if you have an unstructured loop, you should first break it down to concatenated, nested or simple loops, and only after that you can consider testing it. If we consider the coverage measures, for example, like the code coverage or the, or the branch coverage, we can see that it's quite easy to get 100% of, of statement uh, or branch coverage for a for loop, for example. Uh, like, like this one here. So all you have to do is execute it once uh, and then come out of the loop. Now you have 100% statement coverage and you also have 100% branch coverage and actually also decision and multi-condition coverage. But, you know, going one time through the loop and then continuing. Is it really good testing? Uh, I certainly don't think it's good testing. So for loops you have to uh, apply different strategies and this applying of these strategies may not reflect, uh, reflect in any type of increase in the, in the statement coverage or, or branch coverage measures, for example. Okay, so how do you conduct the proper testing for a loop? Uh, so, some conditions are outlined here. So the first test case would skip the loop entirely. So it does not satisfy this, this criteria at all, and this loop is never executed. It is simply skipped, so it goes straight through. Okay, so the next test case would pass through one time. So this ensures that the loop works properly. Uh, the next test case you might want to do two passes through the loop, and for the fourth test case, you could do m passes through the loop where m is less than n, and n would be the maximum number of allowable uh, passes through the loop. Um, however, I mean, you might also want to merge these. It might also be enough just to do m passes through the loop, uh, as it's not, not in the boundary itself. So you can do two passes and m passes, or you can just do the, the m passes, I think. Um, here it's important to exercise a boundary. So now we are coming to the upper boundary. Uh, there it's important to test the maximum or, or what close what happens to the maximum allowable passes. So you would need a test case of n minus 1, which is just below the maximum, then n, which is the maximum, and then going beyond the maximum. And uh, this would be a, a proper way to, to test a simple loop. So for nested loops, the idea is simply to extend the simple loop testing. So all of those ideas that are done for simple loops are still valid, but we just extend the idea while we you know, want to keep some type of reduction in the tests. So we start at the innermost loop. 
and we set all other loops, uh, the above loops, to uh, minimum non-zero values. So basically it would mean that we have one iteration of here. So we set x to 1. So this ensures uh, that this is executed one time only, this above mostly. And then for the inner loop we conduct uh, a simple loop test. All the steps that were in the simple loop test. And once we have done that, we go to the to the next loop. So this this above loop. Uh, we set the inner nested loops to to typical values. So something in the in the middle that would be typical, and we do the simple loop test for that. And this way we work through we can work through any number of of nested loops, uh, starting from the bottom and and going to the going to the top. Uh, for concatenated loops, uh, if loops are independent from each other, then we just do simple loop test individually and we don't care about anything else. If, however, the loops have some type of connection to each other, for example, that the bottommost loop or the topmost loops uh, results affect the bottommost loop, uh, then we do some little more. Uh, so, for example, in, in the source code you see on the screen, it is possible that the calls to do something here that are also repeated in the bottommost loop uh, are somehow connected. So, you really need to understand the source code, whether the loops are independent or not. And if they are not, we do the following. So, we start at the bottom loop uh, again, and we set all other loops to minimal non-zero values. In the bottom loop, we conduct a simple loop test. Uh, then we go to the, to the next loop, while we keep this uh, bottom loop at typical values, and then we conduct the simple loop test here. And we continue until all loops have been tested. Okay, as you may have noticed, uh, the concatenated loops testing and the nested loop testing is basically the same thing. So you start, uh, in the nested loop you start from the innermost loop and in the concatenated loops you start from the bottom loop. Um, the major difference mainly being here that if the concatenated loops are independent then you don't have to consider this extra step, you just do the simple loop test. So these are basically just relying on the simple loop test and then extending it. Uh, and that is that is all for the loop testing.